Okay, today I'm going to review factoring of polynomials and the difference from what we have done before is that before I group them into the different types and you knew exactly what to do. So what happens when you come upon a polynomial and you just have to factor it? So um, hopefully this strategy will help you conquer all the different types that we have learned thus far. So first and foremost, what you need to remember anything about this strategy the first thing that you always want to look for is a GCF. Remember, that's your greatest common factor. And then you want to think about the number of terms that you have in your polynomial. And remember, terms are those things that are separated with a plus or a minus. So to give you more details of that, let's go through and look at this strategy here that we have. First off, if the terms have a common factor, as I just said, you want to factor out that GCF. Okay, then you want to determine the number of terms in your polynomial. Okay, first off, so these are the three different kinds that you'll have. So if you have two terms, then you want to look and see if the two terms are a difference. What is a difference? Remember, a difference is an answer to a subtraction problem of two squares. Remember those squares that we talked about last time? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, so forth and so on. Okay, so um, if you did, it would look something of this general form. It would be a squared minus b squared. And how does that factor? That factors to a plus b times a minus b. Now, does it matter which of these is first? No, it does not, because multiplying, I can switch the order around. Okay, so then if you don't have two terms, then you're going to go to three terms. And if you have three terms, you want to look and see if your trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. And I talked about these when we were multiplying them out and factoring last. This is what I abbreviate, say it's a PST. Okay, and if it's a PST, the first term will be squared and the last term will be squared, a perfect square, and the middle term is twice the product of those square roots. Okay, the other form is just a minus in between those. So what you're doing, this last term of course is always positive because you're squaring, but you're looking to see if this is a perfect square and that's a perfect square. And if it does, and if it is, then you factor it to the square root of that first term, always takes the sign of the middle term, and then the square root of the last term, quantity squared. So this will be a minus b quantity squared. Okay, now the other thing, uh, if it's not a perfect square trinomial, then trial and error is basically what we did with the grouping where we kind of broke up that middle term and then we did factor by grouping. So that leads us to the last one and that is if you have four or more terms then you want to try factor by grouping. And I can't seem to spell grouping today. Okay. And after you do that, you do always need to, when you do that first step, check to see if there are any factors with more than one term in the factored polynomial that can be factored further. And you will see some of those as we go along. So you kind of got to check your binomials. And then, of course, remember that you can always check these by multiplying it back out if you're interested in knowing whether or not you got the right answer. Okay, so let's go tackle some of these and see how it goes. We're going to factor completely or state whether the poly that the polynomial is prime. Okay, so 76. First thing you're always supposed to do is look for a GCF. So I, I'm going to go ahead and write that GCF and then you're going to find out how many terms you have. Okay, those are your first two steps. So the with the numbers they both have factor of 4 in them and they both have a variable. Remember we take the lower exponent of that variable. So when I take out 4x I am left with x squared minus 25 because 4 times 25 is 100. And this is one of those where yeah I factored out that GCF. I have two terms 
Okay, two terms means I need to look and see if this is the difference. Yes, it's the difference of two squares. That's a square and that's a square. So that means that this becomes x minus 5, x plus 5. If you recognize that and remember the shortcut that we practiced earlier. Okay, so now we have uh, 6x cubed plus 24x. First thing again, we're looking for the GCF, so it's 6 and x, leaving me with x squared plus 4. So I look at that, I have two terms. Is it the difference? That's not a minus sign, so I cannot go any further, and that's your answer. Okay, let's look at uh, 5x squared minus 15x minus 50. So this one has a common factor of 5, so I'm going to take out the 5, and that leaves me with x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so then I'm going to see that um, this is a trinomial. This is a perfect square, but this is not a perfect square, so it's not a PST. And that's when I have to go to our a equals 1, b equals negative 3, c equals negative 10. I don't look like a 10. And we did a times c, and that's negative 10. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me that. And then b is equal to negative 3. So I'm looking for two numbers that add up to that. Uh, factors of 10 um, that subtract or have a difference of 3. And that would be negative 5 and 2. So negative 5 and 2, and that means that we break this up. And when you break it up, you might want to put brackets here because, um, well, we don't have to do it this step, but the next step. But anyway, x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 10. So that then when I group them, and I have to put parentheses, then I'll have my brackets. So it's 5 bracket, oops, I didn't say what... Uh, what they have in common. Come on. Oops. No. Put that back. Okay. Five. Bracket. They have a common x, leaving me with x minus five. These two terms, remember, always take that sign. Plus two and x minus five. So then when I get to my final answer, I have five. My common factor is the x minus 5, so I take that out, and what I'm left with is x plus 2. So I know I'm done. I look at those two binomials and know that there's no squared on anything, so after if there's no square on your binomial, then you can't do anything further, because we've already taken out the GCF. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one we have 7x to the 4th minus 7. So they have a common 7. And I take it out and I'm left with x to the 4th minus 1. That's a binomial. Two terms. It is a difference. This is a perfect square and you might not realize that, um, but hopefully you did from the multiplying that we did. But anytime it's an even number, it's a perfect square. So... That means this becomes x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1. Because the square, you just divide your exponent in 2 when you take the square root, and then 1 is a perfect square. And now this is not a difference, so I cannot do anything further with it. This one is a difference, so i got to break it up. So I end up with 7 times x squared plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. And there we have it. Okay, on to number 70, 84. <laughs> 84, um, GCF. I do not have any number or any variable that goes into all four terms. So next, I have four terms, so I'm going to go straight to grouping. And what do the first two have in common is x squared leaving me with x plus 3. Always take that sign. What do these two have in common? Hopefully you can see it, 25, and leaving me with x plus 3. Because remember, when you take out a negative, 
you always have to change that sign and now these two will look exactly the same. So my common factor is x plus 3 and that leaves me with x squared minus 25. Well here's a squared so I have two terms. Is this a minus? It's a difference and these two are both squares so I can actually go one step further x plus 3, x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, 86. We have a common factor, a number that's common to all of those is 5. And then we notice that all of them have an x in it. The lowest exponent is the 1 here. So I take that out and I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. So this is three terms and three terms is a trinomial so now I first want to see that's a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to guess that it's uh, the square root of that, this sign, and the square root of that squared. And you check this middle term x times 2 times 2 is 4x. So um, this is how it factors. But this is what I was saying. If you can recognize that PST, it makes your life um, a lot simpler than having to do what we what we did in number 80. Okay, last three. So again, I'm looking and let's see. I have two terms. Common factor is 7 uh, and an x because there's an x in both terms. And what am I left with? 7 times 3, x, and 5. And that is a binomial, but there's no square on my variable, so I know that I cannot go any further with that binomial. So we're good. Okay. Numbers 90. So we have uh, a common 6 with everything. That leaves me with x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, it's three terms. Uh, that's a perfect square, but 2 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to have to come over here and do my little ABC thing. So A equals 1, B equals negative 1, and C equals negative 2. So A times C is negative 2. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me that. And then B equals negative 1. So those same two numbers have to add to give me negative 1. So the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And to get negative 1 when I add them, then my 2 is going to have to be negative. So that means when I break this up, I'm going to have 6 times x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2. And then I'm going to do my little grouping like we talked about with our trinomials. And these two have a common factor of x, leaving me with x minus 2. And these don't have a common factor, and I notice that this is the same, so I put that 1 there. So I'll remember when I factor it out what I need to write. And so that gives me 6 times the common factor of x minus 2 and x plus 1. Okay, last problem. <clears throat> y squared minus 18y minus 81. I'm looking for a GCF. There is no number other than one that goes in all terms. Um, so now I have three terms. Is this a perfect square? Yes. Is 81 a perfect square? Yes. So I'm going to see if it's y minus the square root of 81. And y times 9 is 9y times 2 is 18y. So I'm done. So that's what you're going to be practicing today. Um, if you have any questions, come and see me. Um, of course, as I showed you on the last video, all the IXL that cor corresponds to any of these that you um, have trouble with. But come see me if you have any questions.